Ewing's sarcoma put Nathaniel Molina's normal life on hold nine months ago. Now he has just three rounds of chemotherapy left. His mom, Lori, has always vaccinated her kids, but she had a real eye-opener when she learned her son's medical condition precludes him from getting booster shots. So in my mind, it was a personal choice, and now that it's affecting my child in that school, it's, I mean, it's, it's a community choice. Doctors are holding Nathaniel's vaccines for MMR, tetanus, and some other diseases back a whole year. Nearly all of our patients in this clinic are immunocompromised. Their immune systems just don't function normally. And so they are not able to benefit directly from getting vaccines. These kids rely on other people's vaccinations to keep them safe through what's called herd immunity. The State Department of Health Services always wants to have a 95% vaccination rate among kindergartners. In the most recent data, though, that came out in Maricopa County, we fell not only below 95%, but below 94%. What that means is that we've lost our community immunity in Maricopa County. So if we get even one case of measles or another vaccine preventable disease, it's going to spread efficiently throughout our schools. And if an outbreak did happen, kids who are unvaccinated for any reason would be kept out of school for a minimum of 21 days. If they were exposed to measles, mumps, or rubella, could that kill them? Absolutely could. Though his prognosis looks good, Nathaniel's mom wishes she could know if someone in his class was voluntarily unvaccinated. But instead, the refreshing feeling of a new year of school is marred by worry. It's scary to, to wonder and not know, I guess, is, is part of it. Um, it's frustrating that it's seems as though not vaccinating is based off of the logical information. In Phoenix, Spencer Blake for Arizona's family.